Hey everybody, Mr. Keenan here. Just got done measuring the uh, outdoor classrooms and I just got done with my lunch break. So um, this is attempt number two. I deleted my first one because I was too hot and I didn't take my sweatshirt off. But I went out and I you can't really see the map on here, but I created a small map of both classrooms because I think that it should not be that complicated to be able to create these. So for the assignment, we're actually going to be creating both of them in Google SketchUp. You're going to go to SketchUp for Schools. Get your reminder how to do that. You go to the Google Apps, and then you look for SketchUp for Schools on here. But since I already have it up, you're going to come to this home screen like this. When you are creating a new one, you're going to do Create New, Feet and Inches. I always like to get rid of this person just because I don't really want to have that. We're going to title it Outdoor Classrooms, how I did that. You can click on it. Sometimes you need to double click. We're going to type in Outdoor. I want you to put outdoor classrooms created by and then your name. So you have your name on it when you're there. Then you need to select where it goes. I'm going to select here, SketchUp files. That is highlighted now, so I'm going to go like this. Okay. I have I took a better picture of the outdoor classroom down below, but I'll basically we're gonna here's what we're gonna do. I'm using a mouse right now. So I can manipulate it how I want it to be. I want this part here to be like that. So we're going to start out by making a, a perimeter or a border around the outside of it. And if we use the rectangle tool, it's going to create a, uh, a gray square on here, which is fine. You're going to start there. We're going to go up into the right with our mouse. If I move this out of the way, so you can see the what is up here like this. So it just clicks on the screen. Let me grab that tool again. Hit Control Z. So the fifth tool down is a rectangle tool right here. We'll be using this. We'll be using the radius for the circle in a little bit. So we're gonna click once. We're gonna move it out. Whoops! I don't like. Why did it change? Escape. reason it's changing that which I'll show you how to adjust that in a second so we have if we basically the up uh, we're gonna do the white pines classroom first um, I we basically have a rectangle on this one that is 24 feet 24 and then an apostrophe 24 feet comma space and then it's 16 feet wide oops what just happened there Reason that happened like that is I didn't mark out what I what um, measurements were. So instead of being 16 feet, it went 16 inches because inches is the default. So if we did that again, 24 apostrophe comma much space 16, and I forgot to put the apostrophe before. So now we should have a rectangle that looks like this. And actually, for the sake of the picture. The numbers are flipped. Escape, Control Z. So let's try this again. We're going to go 16, comma space, 24, apostrophe. Make sure you do apostrophe on each of the 16 and the 14. Okay. Next, we're going to switch over to the arrow tool. This allows us to select and delete. So we're going to go like this and we're going to delete this. The reason we are using this rectangle, this rectangle outline is when I measured it, I measured, when I went out and just measured, I measured from the outside diameter or the outside edge of the material, the outside edge of this side. So our configuration isn't exactly perfect, but it will definitely suit our purpose. And so 
we have once you create the area now we're going to create the material that goes inside that area the firing in the dead center which i will show you how to create right now we're going to go to in the midpoint on the top line we're going to draw it all the way down to the other side like this then we're going to find the midpoint here and bring it across like this this is our dead center of the rectangle that cross section where those two lines intersect because we use the midpoint here and a midpoint here that's going to find your dead center of your circle so we're going to hit escape then we're going to use the select tool again and we're going to get rid of the solid lines so all i'm doing is clicking on them and when they highlight you hit delete and then it goes away our fire ring is approximately 30 inches so we're just going to do a 30 inch firing for very simple purposes because we used when we created the fire ring on both sites we used the 30 inch rake as an example and maybe we'll make it 32 inches just so that we have a little bit more so you're going to click on the center and because this is a radius we're going to be using half of the distance so if we use a 32 inch if the diameter is 32 inches we're going to be typing in 16 because 16 is the radius of a 32 inch diameter circle 16. So you're just going to type in 16 and then you're going to hit enter. Okay. Now I hit escape. Now I need to delete all of the areas here. If you want to leave this, let's delete the lines. We use those lines to help create where the firing is. I'm just going to leave the fire pit uh, solid like that so we have that there. Then we're going to create the stumps. Now on this one, there are 12, there are 12 stumps for seats, and there are three benches that we'll create. First, we're going to create the stumps first. We're going to use that radius tool that we just used for this. We're going to say that the stumps are 18 inches in diameter. So if they're 18 inches in diameter, that would give them a radius of nine inches. And then we're gonna hit enter. Now, we need to make this, we need to make that into a stump. So we're gonna grab a hold of it with the push-pull tool. The push-pull tool is right below the shape. So here's the shape tool, here's the push-pull tool. We're gonna make our nine inch, a radius of nine inches. So we're just gonna type in nine and hit enter. Now we have a radius, then we're going to grab our push-pull to make this 3D. We're going to make this 16 inches tall, 1, 6, just like that. Now, we want to duplicate this, but we also don't want this to change. So to make it so that it doesn't change, we're going to go like this. We're going to go to the highlight, the arrow tool. We're going to select it like that. Right-click, make component. And we're going to type stump tool. You can type in stump chair, whatever you want to type in to name it. Hit OK. Now that is saved. Now I can grab a hold of that and I can start to move it around. But we need 12 of these. The best way to do it is to go like this. We're going to highlight it. We're going to do Control C. We're going to do Control V and then click on the screen. Hit Escape. Highlight them both again. I'm going to get my highlighting tool here. I'm going to do control C, control V, went from two to four. If I were to highlight them again like this, control C, control V, and then you put them on the screen. We'll do it one more time. Control V. Okay. So we have 12 stumps that are ready to go. We need to make a bench. We'll leave these here. We'll, we'll worry about moving these around in just a little bit. So we're going to click off the screen to get them unselected. And so we can we'll put these in place once we get the, the uh, benches created. So the best way to do a bench is to create the profile first. So I'm going to get kind of lower like this. And we're going to create the profile first by going like this. We're going to draw a line straight across. We're going to make it 16 inches long. So you're going to grab the pencil and create a line that's 16 inches. Then we're going to find the midpoint of that, and we're going to go down perpendicular to that. 
we're going to go down six inches. And we know it's perpendicular because we started on the red line and now it's the blue line. So blue lines, when you're drawing it, means that it's vertical, means it's up and down. The red line is horizontal and then the green line is going away from you if you're looking at the X, Y, Z axis like that. So we want to go six inches. We want to make your line six inches. We're going to come down. We're going to type in six. We're going to put enter. Now, we just created a way to make this. We just created a point that we can use. I think it's this one we got to use like this. We go like this, then this, then like that. Yep, that'll work. Show you that again. Starting from scratch, from stump. We're going to create a horizontal line that's red, and we're going to type in 16. Then we will zoom in. We're going to escape. We still have our pencil. We're going to find the midpoint of that, and we're going to go down. Remember, we want it to be the blue, not any other. We want the horizontal line to be red when we draw it. We want the blue line to be, or the, the perpendicular line to that. We want that to be blue when we draw it. Type in six. We're going to hit enter. And then we're going to hit escape to, get, to drop that tool. Hit escape. Then we're going to go to this second arc that's underneath the pencil. We're going to click one spot. We're going to click another spot. And then the third one, you're going to run your run your pencil down the edge like that. Now we just created a half of a log like that. We're going to hit escape. And realistically, if that's half of a log, our log was 16 inches long which means that this, if I did this correctly, this should not be six, this should actually be eight inches. Now let's create the arc again. I'm doing this for the first time, kind of cold without thinking about anything. So now we have it more correct. Click on your, click off of that once you have it. So you're, you're 16 inches across, you're eight inches down. We're gonna click on that blue line and we're gonna delete it. Then we're gonna use the push pull. We're gonna go out six feet. So if you type in 72, which is six feet, like that, okay. Now we wanna make this so this does not move. We, want it, we don't want this to change. So to make our top to our bench, we're gonna select like this. Maneuver your screen so you're only selecting this, the top to your bench. Then you're gonna right click and you're gonna type in make component. Then you're going to type in bench top. Or you can log bench or whatever you want to put it. I'm going to put bench top for mine. So now that's created as a as a component. So now need three of I need three of these, but we also need the logs that go underneath that. We'll create the logs that go underneath it in just a second. So we're gonna um, now that this is highlighted, we're gonna we want to select this one. We're going to do Control C and then Control V, Control V. Now you have three benches. We have our three benches. We have our twelve logs. We just need to make the small ones that go underneath there, and then we will be able to place the logs where we want them to go. So in order to in order to make the logs that go underneath, we're going to grab the radius tool again, and we're going to say that these have a radius of let's say four inches because if you have a radius of four inches your diameter is going to be eight inches that way eight plus eight is 16 that way the tops of our benches will be the same height as our logs so we're going to do four we're going to hit enter that means that this should be an eight inch log we're going to make these logs uh, we'll make them 16 inches long we're going to click this we're going to go like this we click on this and we're going to go 16 on that. We're going to hit enter. Okay. Next, we don't want this to change. So we're going to highlight the whole thing. And what are we going to do? Make it a component. It's going to change. So we're going to type base bench, base for benches. Base for bench, we'll call that. Now, this needs to be rotated from 90 degrees or from 
from vertical, it needs to be rotated 90 degrees down so it sits flat on the ground. In order to do that, so that we made it a component, we can rotate it. We're going to click on this. We're going to click on this rotation tool. Okay. And you, if, you hi, if you hover over top of this, you'll have a protractor that will come up. The protractor is showing you the surface in which you're going to be rotating it. So if I were to look at this and if it were to be, if it were to be flat, so if you have a, if an object like this, let's say we have my pop here. And if I put my, if I put the mouse on it and the protractor comes up on top, all you're going to do is you're going to be spinning it. You want it so that the protractor is on the side of it so that it will rotate how you need it to rotate. So we need to hover over top like this till the black is fine. We're going to click the top. Then we're going to click on the bottom. Realistically, it's best to, if you want it to pivot down when you're starting this, when you click on it, it's better to click on the bottom than the top because your first click that you do, it's going to pivot off of that point. So because I click the top, it's actually going to be rotating up, which is fine because we can move it around however we need to. And now you're just going to rotate it like this. You can type in 90 just like that. And now we have a we have one that is somewhat ready to go. Next thing we need to do is we need to rotate it. Let's get it on the blue line now from here. We need to go to here. We want to try to make it perpendicular with should be perpendicular with our logs now. Now we have it laying down. We're gonna hit escape. And I know some people might have problems with that watch that part of the video and back up and watch it again. So in order to rotate it, you basically have to have the part selected by making a component. Just by clicking on it, once it's a component and you click on it, it will rotate with that. So then you, once it's highlighted, then you go to your rotation tool, do that, and then your protractor will pop up and that's how you'll do that. Now, we wanna make, we wanna make two of these for every bench. So we need five more. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do control. Or, well, let's get out of the protractor. So you got your arrow; it's selected. We're gonna hit Control C, then Control V, put it in. 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 We need one, two, three, four, five. We need one more. Control V, put it in. 